the ongoing uh, situation of our Palestinian brothers and sisters, our Al-Aqsa, the attacks against Gaza, the attacks on civilians, the killings of innocent women, men and children, the destruction of homes and hospitals and mosques and educational sites. Uh, this is completely unacceptable and this is a violation of basic human rights and no country, no person with basic intellect can or will or has supported that and we have seen the international outcry against this and Alhamdulillah we're grateful to Allah this attack on Gaza has now come to a ceasefire. We have to be thankful to Allah for this as the Ghazans are celebrating uh, for this. Alhamdulillah, we also are happy with them because we feel their pain just as much as we feel their joy also. But I want to clarify today some very, very important things for us to bear in mind. First of that we already are getting reports of uh, supposedly a second attack on Masjid Al-Aqsa. And this aggression and oppression against Al-Aqsa and its people has been going on for a long time. The reason for me telling you this is that our dua and our campaign and our donations and our lobbying and everything we can in our capacity for Al-Aqsa and Palestine has to carry on. It does not end today. We have to carry on until the oppression, until the this genocide as it's been called, ethnic cleansing by others has been called, un un until these crimes and these violations come to a complete and lasting stop, inshallah. Having said that, I want to clarify something both for our Muslim community and for those who have doubts about the Muslim community and us from outside. What is that? I want to look at history. And the relationship, the relationship I say, that Muslims have maintained with people of Jewish faith throughout the earliest of time from the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's clearly in the Quran and in the Sunnah and in the history of the Islamic Khilafah, the treatment of people of other faith in a just, in a fair, in a proper way and it's not me saying it as I will soon show you it's clearly documented and evidence for it is in multitudes Allah says in the Quran that الطيبات, in the very beginning of Surah Al-Ma'idah that Allah has permitted for there to be mutual mutual hospitality and eating and sharing of food between people of Christian faith Muslim faith and of Jewish faith also Allah even permitted for marrying between Islamic and Jewish and Christian faith. There are some, of course, rules and regulations in that, but it's been permitted in the whole or generally. Allah also says in Surah Al-Mumtahina that Allah does not forbid you. In fact, Allah commands you to treat fairly and to be kind to and to be just to those who don't attack you, who don't harm you, i.e. there is no concept and there is no uh, possibility in our Islam of wholesale and generalized attacks or slogans against a particular people. We stand against violations, against crimes, against the things that are documented and known and spoken to and attested to by scholars and experts throughout the world. But we do not and cannot ever say that Islam is anti-Semitic. In fact, Islam stands against anti-Semitism just as it much does just as it does against any other kind of racism or targeting of a whole people in one go. It would also stand for any particular hate crime against people of Christian faith or any other faith or background or race or color. And so therefore we need to understand this for ourselves because it can happen that some people under the impression that they are doing something Islamic or standing for the Palestinians are in fact doing what's against Islam. That's not how things are done and that's correct and we condemn these kind of racism or slogans or attacks or any such forms of anti-Semitism or other forms of racism. Having said that, we need to find evidence for this also in our history. Look for example, that the Prophet wasallam, he had around him many Jewish neighbors and he treated them with kindness. He had one particular young man who was of Jewish faith. He treated him with kindness when he fell ill, he went to visit him. He also traded with them, he bought from them food and he gave his own shield as a form of 
if you like, a deposit for that food until he could pay back that money. We find that when the Prophet ﷺ went to Medina, he made a, a, a treaty with the neighboring Jewish tribes, agreeing that we should all together, both Muslims and people of Jewish faith, defend Medina had there been an attack from an outsider. And that the Jewish people had a right to live by their own religion. La ikraha fid din. There is no forced, there is no, there cannot be any forced uh, changing of religion according to understanding of the deen. It also gave the Jewish people the right to trade, to live, to judge for themselves, to judge their own, to have a, 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 a legal system that would be defined by their own scriptures. So this is the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and that's the origin. We find Umar radiallahu anhu, when he then came to Masjid al-Aqsa to receive the keys, afterwards during his khilafah, when he was given the keys, it was offered to him to pray in the church as an honorary, honorary gesture. He refused because he said that I don't want Muslims to come afterwards to think that Umar prayed here, so this church now must be changed into a mosque. Rather, he prayed outside. And until today, you will find the Masjid of Umar anhu just opposite the church. And so that goes to show how Islam stood for the rights of people to practice their religion. Allah says this in the Quran. The discussion is long. I have short time. Umar radiallahu anhu also allowed for people of Jewish faith to practice their religion freely and live in Al-Aqsa and Quds and Philistine from that time. In fact, Salahuddin al-Ayyubi, when he freed Al-Aqsa from the Crusaders, he welcomed and permitted and protected people of Jewish faith and all faiths, in fact, to live and practice their religion freely in the Quds or in the uh, Philistine and the and Masjid Al-Aqsa around that compound. Same is also for the Ottoman Empire. We find history proves this. And all of what I'm saying is not from some, you know, sort of unknown, some doubtful uh, website or something like that. This is all mentioned in an article written by Martin Gilbert, published in the History of Today, Volume 60, issued uh, on the 8th of August, 2010. You can find this all there. But then what's the point of this campaign then? What I'm trying to say to us, to ourselves, and to remind my brothers and my sisters, and to remind all of us is that our campaign for Aqsa, and our campaign for Palestine is against the violations of human rights, is against the crimes against humanity, is against the ethnic cleansing as it's been called by Ilan Pape. Ilan Pape, he is, a, he is a Jew. He was born in Israel. He studied in Jerusalem University. He studied in Oxford University as well. He's written many, many works on this. And he's, from the books that he's written um, are the ethnic cleansing, cleansing of Palestinians and also the world's largest prison referring to Gaza these are the crimes that we speak out against the crimes that are done against Palestinians against human rights violations of human rights as it's been mentioned and reminded and brought to the United Nations as been recorded by in also the Amnesty International uh, publications in the website for example some of these are forcible transfers forced evictions and demolitions unlawful killings excessive use of force torture and other ill treatment among the also violations of human rights is the right to return to Palestine for those who have been taken out or for those who were forced out. According to the United Nations Resolution 194, there is a right for Palestinians to return home and to visit their homelands. But this is not the case. It's not given. This right is not given. And in fact, there are millions of Muslims and Arabs who will live within Israel and the cities of Israel who are not given their basic human rights, treated as second-class citizens. And this is, again, well documented in Amnesty International and other uh, such websites. And so, therefore, what's my message? My message is, first of all, that our campaign for our Al-Aqsa and our Philistine must be ongoing, our dua, our campaign, our donations. We have to carry on striving until these crimes come to a complete stop and justice is provided and served for the Palestinians. Inshallah, we shall carry on. Just because we are standing for the rights of Palestinians, it does not make us anti any particular faith. Because with us also stand people of Jewish faith, as we've seen in our demonstrations. Jewish people are supporting the cause and the call to end 
the crimes against Palestinians. With us is also likes of Il uh, Ilan Pape, like I've said, Noam Chomsky, who's a world-renowned world -renowned scholar and a professor and a, you know, academic, uh, who is, again, of Jewish faith. 35 scholars, most learned scholars of, again, Jewish faith are also calling for these same calls. And so, we need to be very clear that our campaign must be ongoing, but at the same time, our campaign does not equate to or entail any form of racism to anybody or anti-Semitism at all. This is very, very clear. May Allah give us all the ability to remain steadfast and continue to support the cause of uh, Palestine and Al-Aqsa.